I want to invite you to be seated if you were standing during that time of worship and to pray with me. May all glory be to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, today, Palm Sunday, we begin Holy Week. And at the opening of our service, we started with the Liturgy of the Palm, singing Hosanna. And this word originally meant save us in early Jewish liturgies, but over time, it developed into a word of praise. A word of praise like, our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And so it's a cry for help that's filled with hope and praise. And a cry for help, even in hope, is to admit and recognize that we're indeed a people in dire need of help. We're a people in need of a savior. And the people greeting Jesus as he enters Jerusalem know this, and so they're shouting out, following him, Hosanna, the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Who is this? It's the prophet Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee. Now, it's commonly said that Jews at this time were waiting for a Messiah who would be a great military leader, a revolutionary, who would come into Jerusalem and kick the Romans out. And that's true. Some were expecting that. Others, however, were waiting on a new Moses, a prophet, who would come not armed with a sword, but with the word of God. You can think of Moses coming up to Pharaoh, proclaiming, let my people go. As we read the Gospels, and particularly as we read through Holy Week, we need to keep Moses in the background. Jesus is the new Moses. And on Palm Sunday, as Jesus enters Jerusalem, we can think back to Moses re-entering Egypt after the burning bush. Now, both Moses and Jesus have been sent by God into the belly of the beast. Moses is coming to wage a nonviolent war against Pharaoh, who's enslaving God's people. And Jesus is coming to Jerusalem to wage a nonviolent war against the powers of sin and death that are enslaving all people. And in both Moses and Jesus, we see that the way God fights the powers of sin and death is head on. Palm Sunday tells us that Jesus has come into your life to fight sin and death on your behalf. He doesn't kind of stand at a distance and offer a, a generic cure. He's come to be with you, to be present with you. And he takes your plight personally. Now, there may be any number of symptoms of sin and death in your life or in the lives of your loved ones. We've certainly seen the overwhelm of the coronavirus all across the world the last couple of weeks, even in Albany, Georgia, just up the road. And there are many other illnesses that plague us. Also, you or a spouse or a loved one may be entrenched in some kind of addiction, whether it's alcohol or porn or drugs or any number of addictions that we find in the world. Or there may be some emotion that you find dominates you, fear, anger, a need to control other people, greed, pride. There's not one of us who doesn't have some wound from sin and death in our life. And there's not one of us who at some point or another doesn't find ourselves attracted to the allure of the powers of sin and death. When it comes to evil, we are each victims and accomplices. But Palm Sunday tells us that Jesus has come into the belly of the beasts that control us and that oppress us. And so we can join in the shouting, Hosanna, blessed are you, son of God. Help us, save us. But once Moses comes to Egypt, once Jesus comes into Jerusalem, we might ask, do they succeed in the mission they were sent on? Is their victory a short-term victory or a long-term victory? Have they won a battle or the whole war? Because we certainly still see sin and death all around us. 
Well, we can find an answer to this question in a common theme that we see in both the exodus in Moses and the exodus from sin in Jesus. And that's the theme of the firstborn son. You see, it's the 10th plague that finally breaks Pharaoh from enslaving the Israelites. The firstborn of every Egyptian, even the livestock, dies. But why does this finally break him? Why does it not infuriate him and further escalate this battle he's waging with God? It's not just about grief. You see, the firstborn is the future, the future of authority and power. And so the 10th plague is God coming head to head with Pharaoh, saying, you have enslaved my people, but tonight I have ended you. I have ended your power and your authority and your future of oppression over my people. God isn't just winning a battle. He's won the whole war for all time. And after the death of all firstborn in Egypt, Egypt's power as oppression over God's people has no future. Now in Holy Week, we see another important first son, the successor and son of David, the only son of God. And the oppressive powers of sin and death are at work through the Romans and some of the corrupt Jewish leaders, to come kill this son of David, this son of God. Why? To end his power, to end his future and his authority. This is not merely a human story of political powers. This is a cosmic, spiritual battle of the powers of sin and death against God's power of life and love. The people involved, the high priests, the Pharisees, Pontius Pilate, are merely foot soldiers in this war. Is Jesus caught off guard by this? Certainly not. But as he hangs on the cross, we have to ask, are we caught off guard by this? The battle on Good Friday seems like it's at a tipping point and evil has had the last word. I spoke a minute ago about the presence of sin and death in our own personal lives. Think for a moment. Imagine yourself out here on Jackson Street, right outside the church here at the entry to downtown Thomasville. Now imagine visibly next to you whatever ground sin and death has in your life. Imagine that thing next to you. It might be an illness you or your family struggle with, and you feel like you need a miracle and a savior. It might be an addiction, an emotion that controls you. Imagine that thing next to you and Jesus entering into town on a donkey, humbly, quietly, and you can shout praise to you, Jesus, son of God, son of David, Hosanna, save me and help me. And now as we move forward in the service into our passion reading, and as Holy Week moves us forward toward Good Friday, imagine yourself at the foot of the cross, this son of David, the son of God, hanging, dying. And that thing, whatever that thing is in your life, visible next to you. And that is an important point where we have to make a choice. That's the point that we each encounter at some point in our life where the power of sin and death looms over us and we feel beat. And it looks like not even God can save us. And we have a choice to despair or to hope. Despair means that that thing will stay here forever and it will control us and we will be in chains and there is no hope. And the great danger of that is that we fall spiritually asleep And even if we think of God, it's not in any real meaningful way. It's in no way of power in our lives. Hope, on the other hand, doesn't ignore or minimize suffering and pain. It takes it very seriously because Jesus takes it very seriously. But hope imagines that thing next to us will disappear. 
And it imagines that sense of freedom and relief because it looks forward to Easter. It hopes in Easter, even when Jesus is on the cross, it hopes that things will not always be even what they seem right now, as bad as they may seem. Holy Week, this week, is not about just ancient history. It's about walking through the history of our faith so that even in the darkness, even on Good Friday, even today, we can stand in hope. Amen.